Welcome everybody to the Queenstown Chamber of Commerce um, Facebook broadcast. We're here in the skyline. We've had an amazing lunch all about tourism and technology. And with me is Gina. Gina, <laughs> tell me about your um, experience uh, with technology companies that you've been involved with in the tourism industry. It's been a wild ride, right? <laughs> it has been a wild ride. So when I moved to New Zealand 25 years ago, um, I moved to the small town of Fidiana on the Coromandel Peninsula. Um, and I instantly fell in love with the country and there wasn't a lot of jobs for me in Fidiana. And my family and friends back um, in California were asking me about this island off Australia that I moved to. So I decided to start what's called an inbound company to share New Zealand with people. I didn't even know what the word inbound meant, to be honest. I just put up a website that talked about New Zealand, but using American terms like uh, American niche things like, you know, there aren't fly screens here, um, but don't worry about it. Just really spoke to the audience. So started um, an inbound agency, really, really grew in order to be more efficient um, in the um, in the business, um, we accidentally um, kind of started the first booking engine. And that was for the company to be able to book the accommodations that we needed to quickly. But then we commercialized that really quickly. So then we, um, we got into um, the booking engine. And then again, from that tourism inbound company, looking for efficiency and scalability, um, we created Tour Rider. So Tour Rider is a back office system that's used by inbound agents and agents all over the world and actually even Tourism New Zealand and that so that you can create um, travel itineraries very quickly, price them and share them. So um, I was actually a trader back in the United States before right. I came. So I, I, like many people, I fell into tourism and then just to do things better and more efficiently um, ended up in tourism and in technology. Mm -hmm. And so now um, we have a company called Tomahawk, which is a marketing and development agency that only does tourism. So we leverage technology mm -hmm. for the benefit of our customers who could be um, a B&B or a hotel or a DMO like Destination Queenstown or a country. Um, so that's the, the quick background on, on how I landed into this into this position. So what is Tomahawk's kind of key differentiator, like what is it? The differentiator is, is that we actually do not do anything but tourism. Mm -hmm. So we're staying really within our niche. Mm -hmm. So a lot of our team that works with us has worked in the tourism industry. Maybe they were a digital marketer for hotel. Maybe they ran a resort, you know, so they can really understand the customers. And we don't do other industries. Lots right. of agencies do multiple things. The other thing that where we're different is we've got everything under one roof. Mm -hmm. So we can create you do the, do your product consultation and help you create your brand new tourism um, business. So we do consultation. Maybe we just do a website for you. Maybe we just do a booking engine. Maybe we do social media. So it's kind of like um, a, a, your Chinese takeaway. Right. You might say, I'm going to have buffet B, and I want you to do all of it. Right. Because I want you to be responsible for the result. Or you might just say, I just want the wontons. Right. right. So you can choose. And it's not very often that you have an entire creative team and a social media and a Google team and both .NET and PHP developers. So what's ever needed, what's ever best for the customer, we can hopefully fulfill it. Okay, great. So with that perspective, your mm -hmm. message here mm -hmm. was what? My message here was is that there's this beautiful relationship between tourism and technology. Tourism launches a lot of technology yeah. businesses and stuff. Like, you know, we did... Um, um, res book and, and tour rider and, and things like you know Airbnb. So there's all these businesses that can derive out of trying to fulfill a need in the tourism com um, industry. And then you have the technology industry that allows us to um, offer better um, efficiencies in our in our businesses or to reach new markets mm -hmm. or to market better faster with the five different stages of travel, you have to make sure that you can touch them at each point, mm -hmm. and that's usually technology that helps you do that. 
Yeah, and you, you beat the drum of innovate or die. I do. It sounds really dramatic, <laughs> but I'm being dramatic for a purpose. Yeah. Because if you don't look at your tourism business and what your customers are doing, yeah. okay, because we live in a world that things are changing so quickly, it's as soon as we get used to one thing, we want more. Yeah. And, and we want more just as humans, you know, we're like, I want you to know this about me. I want you to deliver it faster. Um, so we have to look at our customers and then look at what they're, what they need, what they want, how we can enhance and do things more efficiently. So tourism and technology are these beautiful partners that must go together. And if you aren't always innovating, it is very hard to catch up and you can lose customers and you can lose markets really quickly. Yeah. What's your take on the Instagram impact on the New Zealand tourism market? Mm, so there's, there's I, I know what you're asking this, there's two different roles on this, right? So any social media um, really hits what we call that first stage, that dream stage, right? It's very dreamy to see pictures. Oh my gosh, look at the view yeah. from up here. I have to be there because you've seen a picture. Yeah. But then what happens, right, is that people go on Instagram trips to be able to take those images. Exactly. So that is one way where it's, um, it's really uh, kind of the ugly side. Um, of what happens, um, but at the same time, how do we how do we deal with that? Um, we just have to we just have to find a way to um, first of all make it safe <laughs> because people are actually dying yeah. trying to do some yeah, of these Instagram right. shots. That's right. Um, and so we just have to find a way to monitor it. We need to find a way to give more value to introduce other places. Mm -hmm. Um, because in New Zealand we've got so many beautiful places. It's not just the point at Wanaka to take your one picture. Yeah. You know, the Catlins and yeah. Gisbon. It's we've just got to get that message out there and try to smooth out all the different other places that you can take beautiful Instagram shots if that's your thing. Yeah, it's fascinating, isn't it? Because mm. the, the blue pools mm. have this huge spike year on year, like. I, don't know, mm. I, can't, I can't remember the numbers on it, but um, I'd never heard of the Blue Pools. I've been through that road a few times. <laughs> and um, and the first I heard of it was when I saw it on Instagram. And, yeah. And then they're reporting, oh, there's so much traffic. It's like, well, it's, no one else is promoting it. It's people no. going there and promoting it on Instagram, yeah. which causes this kind of mob-like approach. Mm. Mm. The other yeah. thing that happened down on the waterfront the other day was you're looking out on the waterfront up to Cecil Peak and Walter Peak and it's the most stunning view <laughs> from the lakes to the snowy mountains and there's a there's a family taking a selfie looking the other way <laughs> I know. At, at the Louis Vuitton sign I know. I know they wanted the Louis Vuitton photo I well they know. wanted both but I know. You know it's really fascinating I know I was on a Milford cruise lately and there's the waterfalls and the most stunning oh my goodness wow moment and the family was taking a picture in front of the buffet right yeah right. so I know people have different triggers yeah we can't judge I guess you know so it fascinated me you talked about May the what day what day in May did the mm. Google travel launch mm. the, the, May 12th. May the 12th. I yeah. was listening. Very good. Thank you. So, for people who are watching this, what is this? Like, you're in so deep into the travel industry, mm. and and you're saying everybody, you need to look at Google Travel. So, google.com forward slash travel. Mm -hmm. What's it going to do? Eat people's lunch? Is it <laughs> it's a pivotal point for all of us in tourism. Right. It doesn't mean that it's going to happen next week. It's not going to happen in the next month or a couple months. But it's a pivotal point because Google has been kind of lining up its ducks right. to this moment. Um, you know, a few years ago, they um, introduced Google Hotel ads. Um, and some of the OTAs, online travel agents, were like, what are you doing? You're trying to eat my lunch now, right? right? The problem is this Google is so big, mm, we don't have a lot of say, right? And then there's Google Flights. So we all kind of knew something was up. And then recent, recently we're like really pushed to um, be a part of 
and to ensure that we've got our Google My Business verification done and that we're, we're all um, engaging with Google My Business. And so in my humble opinion, um, they've lined up the ducks for this amazing um, moment where you can um, do a search on google.com forward slash travel and it is serving up all the data in one place whether it's through Google Hotels, whether it's through OTAs, it includes the, the Google My Business, it includes the flights and then here's the, and then here's the, the, the little trick of it all. Even if you then go and book on booking.com, Google is gathering all of that data in one place. And then on your phone, they're sharing and have a live itinerary while you're traveling. So it knows that you've booked that hotel. And on your phone, while you're walking to do your booked um, earn slot, it pops up and goes, by the way, do you know that there's two seats? Uh, left in the afternoon on the shot over jet boat that's just getting ready wow. because it's all getting integrated onto one place. So if, if, if uh, let's say someone's flying in first class, well it's not really first class anymore, <laughs> business class in Queenstown, they, w would there be a differentiate between a business class passenger and economy and between Jetstar and Air New Zealand? Mm -hmm. It, it's it's um, amalgamating all of your different bookings in one place. Um, and um, the thing is, is that so then any of the businesses along Shotover can do a Google ad, right? right? right. So And it's geo-targeted. So when I pass that restaurant, it might say, hey, make a booking tonight. We'll give you a glass of wine for free. We might pass a store and it says 10% off. Um, at the shop. So everything is getting amalgamated in one place. Um, there's so much online that will show you um, what it's all about. And again, not introducing this to scare anybody, but just introducing to say that the, the ducks are getting lined up. Get with the program or someone else will. If you're not doing it, somebody... It, the other thing that is. Google does, just to finish, is that when I, when I get an itinerary, let's say I book with their New Zealand Direct, I get an email itinerary, my Google Calendar comes up with the events, you know. I mean, that is, that is really smart. It's kind of like the, ex so it'll, it'll do a lot more friendly things if you're in the Google ecosystem, mm -hmm. but at an operator level, it's uh, a force to be kind of hard, sort of played with. And Google wants you to use their toys, and yeah. you'll get rewarded if you do. Yeah. And then you add search, voice search on top of that. Yeah. So Google now has everything in, and as you're walking down the street, you can just go, hey, Google, can you please tell me where I can get the best price for blah, blah, blah. So it's all coming together. Voice search as well. Is like voice search, 40% in the U.S. of everything is searched by voice now. It's going to be 50-50, yeah. um, apparently. Um, in 2020, which is six months away. Okay, well, <laughs> thank you, Gina. Sorry, you. I didn't say your full name because yeah, there was a long version of it. <laughs> so what is your full name again? <laughs> Regina Janine Giovanna Ernestina Rolanda Arucci Paladini. I'm sorry, that's more. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Cheers. And um, have a great trip from thank the skyline, thank descending you so much. down to oh, it's snowy, I know. snowy winter scene. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks. Cheers. Thanks everyone.